Your comments section just became Tesla's most brutal focus group, and it happened fast. In the last 72 hours, thousands of people piled into Model 2 videos with the same four accusations, repeated like a chant. It's fake. It's too low. It's too noisy. It will drive like a cheap box and the price will explode the moment it goes real. And when you read those comments, I get it. A lot of us have been burned before. We were promised affordable. We got, starting at, numbers that disappeared the second the car hit the lot. We were promised comfort. We got harsh rides, thin tires and cabins that made a freeway drive feel like a punishment. So today on Torque Element, I'm doing something different. I'm not asking you to trust hype, and I'm not asking you to believe a rumor. I'm going to take the seven hottest questions that keep showing up in your comments and walk them through the only filter that matters for people over 50. Daily comfort, long-term cost, and the reality of living with a car for a decade or more. Because if Model 2 is real, Tesla doesn't win by impressing 25-year-olds who love gadgets. Tesla wins by convincing the people who actually buy for the long haul. The people who care about getting in without knee pain. Driving for an hour without fatigue. Replacing tires without feeling robbed. Owning a car that feels calmer every year, not more annoying. And here's the part most headlines miss. If Model 2 is meant to scale, it has to feel like relief, not punishment. That means it has to be easier on your knees. Easier on your back. Quieter on the freeway. Cheaper to maintain. And simple enough that you can drive it without feeling like you're negotiating with a tablet. Before we get into the 7 questions, let me ask you something. Think about the last time you climbed out of a low car after a long drive. Not the first 10 minutes. The moment you stop at a store, step out and feel your knees argue with you. That moment is the reason so many people over 50 look at sleek EVs and think, not for me. Tesla knows that. And if Tesla wants a mass market EV, that is the first problem they have to solve. So let's solve it together. And as we go, keep one thing in mind. There are a lot of numbers floating around online. Some are based on real testing. Some are based on early prototypes. Some are just made up for clicks. When I refer to specifications, Treat them as provisional targets and engineering intent, not final promises on a window sticker. The point is not to worship a leak. The point is to understand what Tesla would have to do for this car to make sense for the people it claims to serve. Now let's get to question 1, the one that shows up more than any other. Is Model 2 too low for people in the over 50 crowd? If you have ever driven a low sedan and felt like you're dropping into it, you know why this question matters. It's not about looking sporty. It's about joints. It's about balance. It's about not turning every grocery run into a small workout. For a lot of older drivers, the ideal seat height is not as low as possible for handling. It's high enough to slide in, not fall in. Tesla's older designs, especially the sporty ones, have gotten criticism for being low. Even when the measurements aren't extreme, the sensation can be. The floor is flat. The seat base can feel close to the ground. And the way you enter matters as much as the raw height. The goal for a comfort-focused compact EV would be a higher hip point and a more upright entry angle. If Tesla moves Model 2's seating position upward even a small amount, that changes everything. You stop compressing your hips. You reduce the bend in your knees. You move from a crouch to a slide. And for people with stiffness, arthritis or simply the reality of aging joints, that difference can decide whether you buy the car at all. Here is what would make the biggest difference in the real world. A seat base that sits noticeably higher than a sports sedan, paired with a step in height that does not require climbing. That sweet spot is why crossovers became popular with older buyers. Not because they love the idea of an SUV, but because SUVs are easier to enter and exit. If Tesla wants to pull those buyers into a smaller car, it has to bring crossover comfort into a sedan-sized package. And that leads into question two because even if the seat is higher, the door opening can ruin it. Will the doors open wide enough and will they behave in tight spaces? This one sounds boring until you live it. You pull into a narrow garage. You park next to a wall. You park next to someone who doesn't know how to stay centered. Now you need to get out without twisting your back like a pretzel. Door design becomes lifestyle. A wide door opening reduces the need to pivot awkwardly. A door that holds its position matters on slopes and in wind. People over 50 do not want to fight a door that swings back into their leg. They want predictable, controlled movement. If Tesla builds a door that opens wider than typical compacts and holds at multiple positions, you get the best of both worlds. Wide access when you need it. Precision when you don't have space. It also changes how you load and unload. Groceries. Luggage. A small mobility aid. A wide opening means less strain. Less strain means you keep doing your own errands longer, and that matters more than any screen feature. 
Now let's hit the loudest complaint after too low. Those smaller wheels and tires will make it sluggish and loud. This one is a classic misunderstanding, and it comes from how the industry trained us to think. Bigger wheels look premium. Smaller wheels look cheap. But comfort and cost live on the other side of that trend. Low-profile tires, the kind you see on big wheels, are harsh. They transmit impact. They are easy to damage. They are expensive. They feel sharp on smooth roads, but on real roads, especially patched highways and pothole zones, they beat you up. Taller sidewalls, the kind you get with smaller wheels, are the secret to comfort. They absorb impacts. They protect rims. They reduce that hard slap you feel over expansion joints. And here is the twist. For a lightweight car, smaller wheels can actually improve efficiency and feel. Less rotating mass. Less drag. Less cost. The car doesn't have to be sluggish. It depends on motor tuning and weight. If Tesla keeps Model 2 light and pairs it with a sensible drivetrain, it can feel quick where it matters from a stop, merging onto a road, passing at city speeds. Most people over 50 do not want a tire that looks aggressive. They want a tire that survives real roads, costs less, and keeps the ride calm. This is where Model 2 could quietly outsmart the market. A comfort-oriented tire size is not a downgrade. It is a statement that this car is built for daily life, not for social media photos. Now let's talk about the one thing that determines whether you enjoy a car or endure it. What is the real freeway noise? If you have ever driven a budget car at highway speed, you know the sound. Wind roar. Tire hum. That low-frequency boom that makes you feel tired after an hour. Many EVs are fast and smooth, but some are surprisingly loud inside because the drivetrain is quiet so you hear everything else. A quiet cabin is not luxury. It is health. It reduces fatigue. It lowers stress. It makes conversations normal. It makes phone calls possible without shouting. And for older drivers, hearing comfort matters. Some of us already have sensitivity to high-frequency noise. The wrong tire and the wrong insulation can feel like sandpaper on your nerves. If Tesla wants Model 2 to appeal to mature buyers, cabin noise has to be a priority. That means better glass, better seals, better underbody shielding, and wheel well treatment that reduces tire resonance. The amazing part is that these are not futuristic technologies. They are basic engineering choices. They cost money, yes, but they can be justified when the car is designed around lower manufacturing complexity and lower long-term operating cost. Now, the next question is where the internet gets dramatic. Is it front-wheel drive only or will there be all-wheel drive? For everyday driving, especially in warmer climates, front-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive are both fine. But people who deal with rain, hills, snow, or simply want extra stability ask about all-wheel drive. The real answer is usually strategy. Launch with the simplest configuration. Scale production. Then add variants. If Tesla wants to keep the base price low, they will likely start with one motor. That keeps costs down. That keeps complexity down. That keeps maintenance simpler. But if the platform is designed with space and wiring capacity for a second motor, then an all-wheel drive variant becomes a future upgrade rather than a redesign. And here is what matters to a buyer over 50. You want options without surprises. The base car is stable and predictable, great. If you need extra traction, you want a clear upgrade path that does not double the price. Now we arrive at the big fear that haunts every affordable Tesla conversation. Will the price jump? This is where trust lives or dies. People remember the stories. Promised affordability that became a marketing ghost. So let's ground this question in reality. Prices change for three reasons. Cost of parts. Cost of labor and demand that allows a company to raise prices without losing volume. Tesla can control demand through production scale. Tesla can control labor through automation and manufacturing simplification. The hardest part is materials, especially batteries. Battery cost has dropped over the years, but it is still the largest component. If Tesla uses a chemistry that is cheaper, stable in supply, and scalable, that reduces pricing risk. If Tesla locks supplier contracts early, that reduces pricing volatility. If Tesla designs the car to be easy to build, with fewer parts, that reduces the chance of surprise bottlenecks. So the question is not will Tesla keep it cheap because they are nice. The question is can Tesla keep it cheap because the factory math works. If the factory math works, price stability becomes possible. And this brings us to one of the most emotional questions for older buyers. Is getting in and out truly easier than Model 3 or Model Y? Here is a truth nobody likes to say out loud. A lot of people over 50 avoid certain cars because they are embarrassed by how hard entry and exit feels. They don't want to admit their knees hurt. They don't want to feel old. They just quietly choose a vehicle that doesn't make them struggle. Ease of entry is not a luxury feature. 
it is a dignity feature. If Model 2 raises the seat slightly, optimizes door opening and reduces the bend angle required to sit, it becomes a car you can live with for the next decade. If it doesn't, it becomes a car you admire on the internet and never buy. And if Tesla truly studied mature buyers, this would be near the top of their design priorities. Because once you get that right, everything else feels easier too. Driving feels calmer. Trips feel less tiring. Even small errands feel less like a chore. Now the final practical question. When can you actually reserve one? Now if you've stayed with me this far, I want you to do one thing. Think about your current monthly transportation costs. Not just gas, tires, oil changes, repairs, insurance, all of it. Now imagine those costs being steadier and lower month after month, year after year. That is what affordability actually means. And next time on Torque Element, we are going to take that idea and make it concrete. We will walk through realistic monthly operating costs, electricity, insurance trends, maintenance expectations, and where the real savings show up for drivers who care more about calm ownership than performance bragging rights. If you want that episode, support Torque Element right now. Like the video. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. And in the comments, tell me your age range and what matters most to you in a car, comfort, quiet, or cost. I read every comment and I use them to decide what we analyze next. Because the real story of Model 2 is not a headline. It is whether it finally makes electric driving feel like relief. And if Tesla gets that right, the people calling it fake today will be the ones wondering why they didn't see it sooner. Punishment. That means it has to be easier on your knees. Easier on your back. Quieter on the freeway. Cheaper to maintain. And simple enough that you can drive it without feeling like you're negotiating with a tablet. Before we get into the seven questions, let me ask you something. Think about the last time you climbed out of a low car after a long drive. Not the first 10 minutes. The moment you stop at a store, step out and feel your knees argue with you. That moment is the reason so many people over 50 look at sleek EVs and think, not for me. Tesla knows that. And if Tesla wants a mass market EV, that is the first problem they have to solve. So let's solve it together. And as we go, keep one thing in mind. There are a lot of numbers floating around online. Some are based on real testing. Some are based on early prototypes. Some are just made up for clicks. When I refer to specifications, treat them as provisional targets and engineering intent, not final promises on a window sticker. The point is not to worship a leak. The point is to understand what Tesla would